Hey, y'all. Mm-hmm. This one's extra juicy. Hold on. Let me put some of this back. I told y'all a little bit goes a long way. I'll put some of this in my hair to make it shiny. Mm-hmm. Make sure I got my elbows. Oh, this smells good. This is the... Uh, Mango papaya body butter. It smells good. Alrighty. So that is by Queen Care Cosmetics. I have on my Queen Care shirt today. That is an all natural skincare line. All right. <laughs> so I hope everyone is doing well today. I'm just relaxing, having some tea. And the topic for today is five reasons you don't trust yourself. And I think this is a great topic for you ladies because people are always making jokes about women and their indecisiveness and how, you know, we have this running joke about not knowing what you want to eat. And I mean, it's okay to not know what you want to eat sometimes. I think that's normal. But... When you are more in tune with yourself, the indecisiveness will decrease. And obviously, that was just an example. Indecisiveness goes beyond just not knowing what you want to eat. But the reason people are able to make jokes like that is because they genuinely believe that women are indecisive, which is why when we as women make decisions, a lot of people don't take us seriously. Because they feel like we're going to waver away from that. They feel like, oh, okay, yeah, she said this, but I can convince her otherwise, right? Let me crack this window, y'all. They feel like they can convince you otherwise because they don't take what women say seriously. So five reasons you don't trust yourself. Number one, you second guess yourself a lot. You're always, you know, oh, I don't, should I do this? Hmm, did I make the right decision? Like once you make a choice, you don't know how to just accept that choice and keep it pushing. Like if I decide, okay, I decided the other day that there was a client I didn't want to work with. I didn't like her energy. I didn't like that it was taking her forever to get back with me on certain things, you know, reviewing the terms of the contract, da, 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 da. So I passed her on to someone else who used to be my assistant a couple years ago because I feel like She's a great assistant too. Maybe your personalities will vibe better. I could go back and forth with myself and say, well, dang, I passed up some money. But then on the other side, it's like, okay, I passed up the money, but I passed up the money because I don't think it's going to be a lucrative relationship. So that's a wise decision. You get what I'm saying? So instead of me, dang, I still could reach out and see if she's hired. Nah, I'm good. I've already passed her along. I'm moving forward, right? So learn to accept those decisions. So don't second guess yourself. The second thing is you're indecisive. It's not even that after you make a decision, you don't know if you made the right choice, but you have a difficult time making choices in general. And like I always tell you, ladies, life is about choices. That is the, that's the premise to me of life. You have to make choices with what you wear, what you eat, if you're going to wear makeup or not, what school you're going to go to, if you're going to go to college, all of that stuff, right? Everything is about choices, even down to your career, down to the breakfast that you eat in the morning. You have to make decisions. And so if you're not able to make decisions, that's going to be a huge problem. Oh, I don't know what to do. Like something's going to be decided for you because guess what? Time waits on no one. All right. So to help with indecisiveness. Write down what your options are and write down what the pros and cons of those options are. I know that probably sounds cliche. People are like, oh, well, weigh the pros and cons. Yeah, do that. Because if you have a difficult time making a decision, it's because you don't know what you're getting yourself into and you're scaring yourself before you even have the opportunity to choose. So write down the options, write down the pros and cons and make a decision. Just do it. Yes, it may be a difficult process to start, but do it. Life is all about choices, all right? 
A third reason you may not trust yourself is because you're always asking for everyone's opinion. So guess what? I'm different than your mother, than your boyfriend, than your sister, than your best friend, than your cousin, than your mentor, than your pastor, right? All of us are different personalities with different perceptions. If you go around asking everybody for their opinion, you're going to hear something different. So, and this is not to say not to ask people for their opinions, but why are you asking them? Ask yourself that first. Why am I asking this person? Do they have experience with what I'm dealing with? Are they older? Love you too. Are they older and you just feel like they're wise? What is the reason? Ask yourself that first. The second thing, what am I going to do with that information? Because for me, when I ask for people's opinions of my mentors, I ask them so I can reflect on it and say, okay, well, why did they say that? Because my mentors don't give me advice without explaining why. So that's another thing. Is the person going to be able to explain why? Or are they going to say, well, this is what I would do. Well, this is what I did. Okay, so why did you make that choice? What's the reason? So I'll give you an example. If you're in a consultation with me, right? And you say, well, what do you think I should do? I don't know if I should stay or I should leave. But you told me that you're not attracted to him anymore because he cheated on you. He gave you an STD. And most recently, you found other women in his phone again. Didn't see any evidence of cheating per se, but you just saw new women in his phone. I may say, well, judging from what you said, it sounds like your safety is in danger because... If he has sex with you and gives you another STD that can cause infertility, you know, you've mentioned you want children and then obviously the infidelity bothers you. So why would you continue to stay with the man if he's putting your health in danger and you want him to be faithful? And he's not giving that to you. So I would recommend from what you stated that, you know, you should leave. Right. Now, I would not say it like that. I would pose it back to you and ask you, well, what do you think you should do? If you're worried about this and he's not giving you that, what is the next course of action, right? And let you think it out for yourself. However, I'm giving you an explanation, right? So then you have some other people who will say, oh, no, you need to leave him. You told them this long story and they're just like, oh, you need to leave him. But they can't tell you why. And some people will tell you to leave your man for no reason. So remember who you're asking, why you're asking, and then what am I going to do with that information? And you can let them know too. Like if I go to somebody for advice, sometimes I tell them, I'm just sort of trying to weigh my options here. I have not decided yet, but I wanted to get your opinion. So this way, no matter which way it goes, they're not offended that you didn't take their advice. You know, cause some of y'all ask for people's advice all the time and you never take it. And so then it's like, why do you keep coming to me if you're not going to take my advice? To be That gets annoying to me too. When people, they book consultations every month, every month, every month. And then they don't take my advice. And I'm like, look, stop. I don't want to hear from you anymore. I love you. But I need for you to make a choice. Like, think, think this out. Don't keep coming to me. Yes, I'm being paid. But again, money is not that deep. My goal here. Yes, I'm going to charge you for what I do because I am trained and I am experienced in it. But the goal is for you to grow. So if you're not growing, I don't want you to continue coming here because obviously, obviously I'm not the person for you. All right. So the next thing is they don't have a plan. You don't have a plan. So you don't trust yourself. It's just like if you meet a guy and he's like, oh, yeah, I want to be a rapper I want to have a clothing line. I want to own my own business, maybe like a restaurant, right? And it, it's like, okay, you want to do all this, but he smokes every day. He sits on the couch. You know, he always helping his mom out around the house and stuff like that. And then he goes to his crib and you're wondering how you even get your bills paid. What else do you do? You get what I'm saying? Or maybe he has a good job that pays him well but he doesn't like his job and he's not doing anything towards those goals so it sounds good but you don't have a plan you're not going to trust him he's not showing any evidence that he would be good at 
goal setting and actually working towards those goals. So when you continue to say you want something but not work towards those goals, in your mind, it's like you become a liar. That's how you start to look at yourself like, wow, I'm, I feel like I'm living a lie at this point. Like I'm not doing everything that I'm supposed to do. I'm not living up to my potential. You can't trust yourself under those circumstances. So what I recommend is that you start small, right? If you know, okay, I want my own boutique, start thinking about what you want to sell. Brainstorm. Go online and just look at clothes, look at dresses, look at rompers, look at sandals, look at flip flops, look at anything that you could potentially sell in a boutique and then start narrowing down what you want, where you could go. Maybe you want to go to DH Gate, right? You can go to different places to get your merchandise, but in order to get to that goal, you have to start with those baby steps. You can't just say, oh yeah, I'm going to start this, boom, build a website. Well, where's your product? Who are you selling to? Okay, if you're selling to this average age, 18 to 24, what size do they typically wear? Right? Is it going to be clothes from Europe or clothes from the U.S.? Or are you ordering clothes from China? You got to figure all of that stuff out. So when you don't have a plan, you make it very difficult to trust yourself. And the final reason you don't trust yourself is because you have not prepared. So right then I talked about a plan, but along with the plan comes preparation, right? So if you're like, okay, I want this boutique. So then you decide, yeah, okay, I want to start selling rompers. I want to sell sandals and I want to sell dresses. Well, how do you prepare yourself for that? Have you taken any sales courses? Have you taken any design courses so that you'll be able to create your own flyers? Who's going to create your logo, right? Are you going to go to Level Up Consulting Firm? We'd love to have you. Are you going to hire, you know, a family member? Are you going to go to the Student Business Center on campus? How are you going to get what you need? How do you prepare yourself to execute the plan that you have? right so when you don't prepare yourself you're not confident in yourself it's just like when you're about to take a test i know I, I need to take this test on friday and you're looking forward to the test but you're not confident because you know you have not studied i'm not prepared right so preparation matters in addition to the plan you plan to take the test but have you prepared to take the test and planning and preparation are two separate different things which is why you hear courses on planning and preparation different. You have the plan and then you have to prepare to execute the plan. All right. So I hope these helped. Um, you don't trust yourself because you second guess yourself. You're indecisive. You're always asking for everyone else's opinion, not even experts. You're just going to your cousin, your friend, your pat, your, you know, like go to people who know what they're talking about. And, and if they do know what they're talking about, figure out why, like why? Okay, I asked this person for advice because they're an expert in this. I have different mentors for different things. So I don't go to my substance use um, counselor, mentor for things about just mental health yes substance use disorder does deal with mental health but i have a different mentor for that right i don't go to my business mentor about things related to mental health why because business and mental health yes you may deal with people with mental health concerns or people who just have not been taking care of themselves well because they're moving in business but it's not the same thing you don't deal with the same dynamics Figure out why you're asking these people for advice. And the last thing I'll say, this isn't even on, on my list, but when you go to an expert for something like that, make sure that you can pay them for their time. Don't waste people's time. I don't have a problem with people asking simple questions like under a post, you know, wanting me to explain. But some of you literally want full-blown sessions in my DMs when you can go to hangingoutwithlove.com and book a session with me. A lot of the content on my page is free. So if you're looking for something free, 
go look at the free content. But anything that comes out of my mouth on a one-on-one -on -one basis is to be paid for. So keep that in mind. So I hope this helped. Lord, I just spilled my tea. I'm glad it's green tea because it's not going to stain. Anyway, I hope this video helped. I'm about to post this. Um, it's a consulting session. Mm -hmm. And hello. And thank you to everyone who joined. I wasn't doing many shout outs as I normally do. But I love you all. I hope this video helps. And I'm about to go ahead and get this posted to the YouTube channel. Peace.